Welcome back to the charismatic voice. I just realized that when I think about grunge music, I only think about male vocals and that's not okay. So I'm seeking to educate myself on what a female grunge vocalist sounds like. Let's get to it. Whoa. Oh, make me over. I'm all I want to be. I walk and study in demonology. Hey, so that you can make it. Yeah, now you really made it. Hey, so glad you can make it now. Oh, look at my. Oh my gosh. This is like, this is so wildly fun to hear within the context of some of the things that I've been really digging into. <laughs> it's like, I feel like so many exclamation points are going off in my head right now. It's really, really fun. I'm going to go back to the beginning um, and we're going to talk about those exclamation points. Oh, make me over. I'm all I want to be. I walk and study in demonology. Hey, so that you can make it. Yeah, now you really made it. Hey, so glad you can make it now. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just, there's so things in there I'm like whoa 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 okay so let's let's think about for a bit like what is it what does a grunge vocal sound like it's gonna sound a little a little bit of gritty right there's gotta be a little bit of gravel in there somewhere it's just gonna be grungy right it's gotta have something like sort of dirty about it uh and she's got her voice is even lower than I expected I read that uh, she's a mezzo-soprano but uh I don't know Honestly, voice types like that, soprano, mezzo soprano, contralto, all of these things were really meant to be used for classical singers in the German opera system to help them quickly get into different fox. So anyhow, sometimes it's not very useful to really apply that to singers in different genres. She sings low. We're going to put it like that. Her voice sits low, um, has a nice depth to it. She also purposefully bottoms out sometimes where it kind of gets a little fuzzy down there. <laughs> and she has, uh, there's a lot of uh, what some people might consider sloppy endings, but it's intentional. So I don't know if it's sloppy. I feel like it's like saying that impressionistic art isn't very clear. <laughs> no kidding. That's not supposed to be. Right? This is impressionistic endings. They, they, uh, they don't necessarily stay on the same pitch. Sometimes they just kind of, tilt downwards and, and blur the lines there. Uh, also, there's amazing moments of very defined nasality. Uh, and you can hear that's really playing with this idea of, well, I don't need to have a pretty nicely balanced rounded tone. Back to the beginning one more time. I, I want you to imagine this bit of music now as if it were an impressionistic painting. Oh, make me over. I'm all I want to be. Like, kind of slurred. I walk and study. In the vocal. In demonology. Hey, so that you can make it. Yeah, now you really made it. Hey, so glad you can make it now. now. That is especially bad with it. It's like it's got a little almost cat in the sound. <laughs> Meow.
I was digging into, uh, or I've been digging into uh, grunge a bunch and trying to understand how it's really set in time. Um, obviously, it actually, the the grunge movement in Seattle spanned uh, such a small time period, just, you know, early 90s. And this is coming out, I think, I want to say 1998. And uh, I'm going to double check that. 1998? 1998 album celebrity skin indeed and uh and she courtney was married to kurt cobain so there's going to be a lot of influence in the sound there and i'm sure that was also very difficult um and at this point it seems like the grunge movement i don't know how much it's really continuing into hole's sound or if they're evolving i've read some things that say that hole like evolved to be more mainstream at this point it does feel like it has somehow a little a little more in your face um sort of drive it feels more mainstream somehow i'm not able to really pin pin my finger on why it feels more mainstream it feels uh, maybe a little more catchy although some things like Smells Like Teen Spirit also has a lot of catchiness to it. But it doesn't feel as much like a garage band, something that is, you know, just being made uh, without much desire of a public eye on it. This is definitely uh, making statements about being a celebrity and, and I think how <laughs> it might suck with all of the pressure to be something you maybe don't really feel like you are. I'm going to go back a little bit. She delivered that line with your pound of flesh. Oh my gosh. That, <laughs> this woman has attitude. <laughs> right, this definitely feels to me like it has like a little more drive, like maybe a little more punk elements going into it, a little faster pace, not as um down but at the same time it has just this feeling of I just want to be a gritty human and I love the that the title is celebrity skin and then we've got this sound that's like just a gritty human <laughs> it's really conflicting with that idea it's just a, a fascinating yeah fascinating um What's a word? I can't think of the word right now. It's not just conflict, but it's when you put two things in juxtaposition. Ah, okay, it's in there in the brain somewhere. It's not being accessed today. I'm gonna go back a little bit. Maybe the word will come up. When I wake up in my makeup, it's too early for that dress. Was it I feel like she's, sorry, I paused again, I know, but she's basically describing Mrs. Maisel, who like does the whole thing where she wakes up, does all of her makeup and everything perfectly and then pretends she's been sleeping the whole time. I am so, so very happy that I get to work from home. Y'all, that is a really nice thing. Yes, we go out on the road and we'll do other things and then I'll be waking up early with my makeup and everything. But, um, and, and yes, I have a two-year-old, so any amount of sleep is appreciated. Um, but just this expectation of women getting up really early doing their hair and makeup and then going to work. I, I did it for years too. Oh my gosh. It is so exhausting. I have wanted so many times to be a dude so that I didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for reminding me how lucky I am to, uh, get to work from home. Hole. When I wake up in my makeup, it's too early for that dress. Was it invaded somewhere in Hollywood? I'm glad I came here with your pound of flesh. No second feeling. 
the way she gets the sass in there is all about the nose. If you guys, you can even see it. It's obvious that she really likes singing this line. I think she's like, oh yeah, I gotta crinkle my nose. But if you really do crinkle your nose, it can help to lift things up more um, and, and drop that soft palate some to get that sound going through your nose, give it a little extra nasality sass. Also, she goes flat on the note on purpose. I did a skim through the lyrics before um, before I listened to this, but wait a second. I missed this part. Oh, Cinderella, they aren't sluts like you. <laughs> Contradiction. There we go. It seems like it has lots of contradictions in it. Oh, man. These lyrics are hilarious and so good and actually really insightful at the same time. It checks a lot of boxes. Check out that diphthong, down. She actually adds an extra vowel to it. <laughs> down. So normally down is ow, ow. She has like an ah, almost even going towards an air, e down, ah, down, wow. That is a wide range of vowels to travel through. <laughs> nice. Can you stand up a well you just fall down? You better watch out. Oh, what you wish for. I just love this, this moment. Yes. <laughs> so much hilarious, uh, Boldness, daring. No, oh, it's way too much fun. You better watch out. Like moi. Oh, Hear me out. I think this resembles something else we've seen in the past. Uh, this is the 90s version of the American can-can. Are you with me? Like, yeah or no? Let's argue about it. <laughs> Respectfully, of course, with much glee and lightness because this is a fun subject. Uh, let's talk about this in, a, in our live premiere chat there if you're with me. Uh, 1990s American can-can. <laughs> So surprisingly light in this section. When I heard it come before too, I was thinking like, wow, that's, yeah, there's, it almost feels like it's not grunge right here, except for the way that her sound still has that nasality in the edge. When I wake up in my makeup, have you ever felt so used up as this? And the impressionistic brushes of pitch. Okay, this this pop up happened way too soon. I do I do really love the zombie cranberry cranberries zombie. I think is one of the most incredible songs, and especially the music video too. But um, 
popped up way too soon, was very distracting. I thought we were about to get a sudden end. I'm going back to catch that better. That line, we in Japan, it's, I don't think you could get any more nasal on pound. That is, I think, such a bold and fun goal. I really dig it. And I, I think that we should celebrate super nasal moments like this a little bit more. That's catchy. It's hooky. I think she's a. Uh, is she doing a Marilyn Monroe impression there with the dress flying up? Nice symbolism. Ooh, that was a fun in sound. The female grunge sound is way more fun than I expected. And I'm gonna continue to dig more into grunge in general, figure out why it's good. I know it's good, but I'm, I'm trying to get all of these details together and put it together in some sort of course so that people can enjoy grunge as much as I get to enjoy grunge. So if you wanna learn more about that, I'll put some information about it in the about section in the comments. And if you just wanna hear some more analysis of grunge, I'll put up a playlist over here, but whatever you do, may you fall more in love with music every day. Mm -hmm.